Since he announced his candidacy last summer, Republican nominee Donald Trump has proven to be divisive and controversial through his stances and comments. Joining us now, we welcome back Ali Siddiqui and Daniel Smith and Rachel Eiler. And a newcomer joining us is Sarah Wagner, a junior theater major here at Marywood University. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. Thank you. So guys, obviously Donald Trump has made a lot of derogatory comments. Um, I'll start with you, Daniel. What does this say? Uh, what does this contribute to the bigger picture on his character and his fitness to be president? Yeah, it shows that he's not a very kind person. He has said derogatory comments about women, minorities, every minority you can think of that's not white males. And it just shows that he's not very compassionate and doesn't really care what people think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ali. Um, yeah, going off about what um, Daniel said, <clears throat> I feel like it personally, as um, a Muslim from Pakistan studying in the States, I feel like it really worries me because I have family who lives here. And it's like, I know the polls are very close right now, but and I feel like no matter what the outcome of tonight's election is, I feel like Donald Trump has already won because he's sort of bringing out this hatred and hate speech and this very not pleasing rhetoric out and like it it frankly it scares me and um as i was discussing i was telling my friends earlier like um i might be flying back home soon and obviously when i come back to graduate like and if he is elected president like will i like i'm i have a tough time at customs as it is when i enter the united states is it, is it going to be more tough for me to you know get back and just you know so it, it, it's, it's stressful for me, you know, more than you guys can imagine, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing, one thing that does not discriminate um, about Donald Trump are his comments, since they are to a various range of uh, people, handicapped journalists, uh, war heroes, people of different races, as you said, uh, women. Uh, yeah, a lot of these comments and derogatory things that he said have gone unapologized for. Now, mm -hmm. the Access Hollywood tapes, yes, he came out and apologized for. Mm -hmm. I think he had to. But a lot of these things did not go addressed at all mm -hmm. by the, the campaign, and he was almost praised for being politically, for not being politically correct. Um, what do you think about this? Why do you think this is? Why do you think this is almost praised on some levels? I think it's praised because people are looking at it as a sign of power. Mm -hmm. They're thinking that he's coming right out and saying whatever he wants, and that makes him powerful. But in my opinion, I think it's more powerful to have the courage to apologize. Mm -hmm. It's at the point now where it's too late for him to go back on his image. At least that's how a lot of people view it. But at, it shows a complete disregard for what I think the United States stands for. And so you think that he's almost taken this as a strong suit, as an, like a good thing about him? I think so, yes. Yeah. And I think his supporters agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Rachel, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I, think it's, um, I think it does go along with power, but um, growing up in a military family, you know, I, was, I learned respect. You know, you you don't um, go out of your way to hurt somebody's feelings or um, disregard them in any way. I grew up um, knowing that word, respect, and I think to have respect not only for people but for this country.